okay? Small liberal arts, urban setting, large universities, pretty much the same thing. So um, we've, this is just to sum up what's been mentioned uh, earlier, but I just want to give you ideas about what the university might expect from you. So what is the content of um, a selection package? So first of all, after you have done your research about the universities, you will see, you will need to check out how you will apply for those universities. Do they have an online application? Is there a PDF uh, document that you need to um, fill out, print and send through courrier? How you will get your application to that university? So these are the things that you would like to figure out before you, um, you think of applying. The second thing is your grade transcripts. This is really, really important. So, so um, mostly for graduate students, what you will have to do uh, is to submit your grade transcripts in all your academic documents through the universities in which you are currently enrolled. Okay? Lots of students would tell me, my university would not accept this. How can I do this? The universities in Tunisia will accept if you help them. Because if I were uh, employed by a Tunisian university functioning with a completely different system, if you just ask me that question roughly, I will say no. Because I don't know how to do it. But this is how you should do it. Well, this is, you should reach out to staff. First of all, you should hold on to your original documents. The original great transcripts and diplomas in Tunisia are only released once. And American universities will ask you for the authentic original documents. Do not send these. Don't send them. Because in the university in the U.S., you can print, uh, you can ask the university for as many authentic documents as possible, which is not the case in Tunisia, because uh, we have the copie certifiée conforme from the local authorities. And these are also reliable, okay? Because this is what's going to happen. If you send the originals uh, to specific universities and you're applying to four universities, how do you think you'll end up applying to all four of them? And all four of them are asking for the original documents, okay? So that's one thing. The second risk is, okay, who will guarantee that if you are accepted or not accepted, how will you get your documents back to keep them to your records? These are the two questions that you should ask yourself. So long story short, if a university is asking you for official documents, there are two things. You would either ask your university for a specific copy. They will mostly say no because our system doesn't function this way. So here's what you should do. You keep your originals. You end up doing certified true copies at a municipality. And you will do certified translations from a certified translator. So, Mutarja Mohalef, traducteur assermenté. So, any traducteur assermenté all across Tunisia that is certified by the, by, um, the Tunisian government is accepted. So, don't, go to don't come to the embassy, don't try to call anyone. It is just someone who is accepted by the Tunisian government. That's more than enough. Okay, do certified true copies. If the universities will ask you to mail their, uh, the application or the great transcripts, just uh, try to um, talk to someone from the university's administration. Um, if they say no, just turn to one of your professors who still teach there. I think they would definitely help you because all that you need is an envelope that has certified true copies, reliable copies and certified translations, double-checked by someone from the university that gave you those transcripts and those diplomas, and you will need the university stamp. It's all about the university stamp, okay? So don't think, this, don't think that the procedure is too complicated. That is all that you need. Just prepare your documents in advance and explain to Tunisian staff and faculty how you will end up delivering that application. You had a question? Nope, not at all. Okay, here's what's going to happen. Um, anyone here in Tunisia does not have the uh, abilities, is not qualified to convert from the Tunisian 20 scale 
to GPA. There are two case scenarios. The first case is the university that it will convert, they will just ask you for, for reliable documents and they will end up converting the, either because they have a converting unit on campus or they just received too many Tunisian applications so they know how the system works. Or there is a Tunisian student who, who would help them figure out the grades. They've already been through that before so they know how to figure it out. Some universities will ask you to send um, to send your grade transcripts to a credentials evaluator. There are lots of them in the US. You have uh, ECE, for example, or WES. Some university will specify the list, or you can just, uh, well, most universities will specify um, the, the organizations with which they work. And you will not send your grade transcripts directly to the university if they don't ask for it. You will send it to the credential to the credential, credentials evaluator who will convert your grades. They will send you um, uh, an equivalence report with a conversion report to you and to the university. You just need to list the universities for which you're applying. Okay? Is, is that clear enough? This is really important. If it's not clear, I can just repeat that. I know sometimes it can get a little bit confusing. Okay? Um, those who go to uh, TBS, for example, don't have an issue. Those who go to MSB don't have an issue. Some university, I mean, the only public university that works with a GPA scale is TBS. Um, and there are some other private universities here in Tunisia who also work with a GPA. But again, if they don't know the school, they might ask you to send your grade to credential evaluator anyways. Okay? Um, so, this is about the great transcripts. Or some most undergraduate uh, departments and some graduate will ask you to submit an up application online. So uh, you will d assign a counselor. So a counselor is someone from your school who will first of all recommend you on behalf of your high school and will send all your academic documents on your behalf. In all cases, students most of the time, I can't say that this rule applies to all universities, but you will most likely uh, have your academic institution, your current academic institution, or any academic institution that granted you a diploma and great transcripts to send them from that institution. And this is how universities will guarantee the reliability of your documents. Okay? Um, so after the transcripts, students most of, uh, most of the time will have to take standardized tests. Do you know what standardized tests are? These are exams that students take, not only international students, but also domestic students. You will have to take it um, just to make sure, just for the universities to make sure that you have the right analytical mindset, the analytical aptitude to understand and succeed college or university level um, courses in the US according to the level of study. So high school students who are applying to undergraduate programs, they will have to take the SAT. Most graduate students um, will take the GRE, um, but there are some specifics, there are some exceptions. For students who are applying to um, business programs, you are more likely to take the GMAT rather than the GRE. Okay, the universities are really clear about these. You will have a full page for requirements and they will explain the requirements and they will give you the, mo the frequently asked questions. And if you still have questions, if you're still confused about one acceptance on one requirement, you will have to email the university or reach out to me and I can definitely help you with that. Okay? Um, the TOEFL. So, the TOEFL is not a certification. The TOEFL is just a language exam. So, it's a language test that will show the selection committee or the staff, the university staff and faculty, that you as an international student who is a non-native English speaker, you have the right level of English to understand and succeed college and university level classes regardless of your field of study and regardless of your uh, level of study. Okay? There is no pass-fail scores for either the standardized tests or the language tests. Uh, each university would ask for a specific score. But again, the higher the score, the better. 
Okay? And again, um, if you are not getting this course from the first time, of course, you can take the tests again. Some universities will only require up to five times. But you have up to five times. I mean, if you take it twice, if you take each exam twice, I think it's healthy for you as an international student. Okay? Um, so standardized test, language test. Recommendations. So um, high school students are required to submit two academic recommendations and one counselor recommendation. So two teachers from your school and one counselor recommendation. So our system do not, does not have any counselors. Um, so a counselor can be someone that represents the uh, high school staff, censor, director, directrice, surveillant général, anyone who is willing to help you that will speak on behalf of the school. Okay? Or sometimes a teacher that is assigned by the school to represent it. Anyone can help as long as the, that person speaks on behalf of the school or has the right to speak on behalf of the school. For graduate students, for, uh, for uh, future graduate students, what you have to submit mostly is two to three recommendations and there is a mix of um, professional and academic references. Okay? If you are looking uh, for research programs, either um, a research-based mas based master's or a PhD program, um, the, the requirements will be more oriented towards um, academic references. Okay? But sometimes they would ask you for both. Uh, sometimes two academic references and one professional reference. But because if you are applying to graduate program, I highly, highly recommend that you have professional experience before you consider applying. You don't have to jump from one diploma to another. And don't forget that the U.S., they work on a four-year degree scale. We have the LMD system, which is a three-year degree. And if you would like to be considered um, without doubts of not being eligible, I highly recommend for LMD students to apply after their Master 1. Because some universities won't look at the credits, they would just count the number of grade transcripts. If they only see three of them, they would say, look, we need a fourth one. Because our students, we made our students, I mean, go through four years of college or university in order to be eligible. So we can't accept you with three. Four is not equal equals to three. So, um, and again, if you would like to, um, to apply for a full bright program, you need to have at least four graduate um, for great tra transcripts. If you are an engineer, if you are a doctor, if you are a pharmacist, if you are a dentist, if you are um, um, an engineer, it is not a problem. You already have at least five, five years. So that is not a problem. But for those who are under the LMD system, I highly recommend that you get a master's one before you consider applying. Okay, yes? I have two questions. Uh -huh. Yes, okay. PhD and Masters. And for uh, the difference between Master of Engineering and Master of Science? Masters, and masters of Engineering and Masters of Science. To be completely honest with you, um, it really depends on what the program offers. So Masters of Engineering is mostly designed for engineers. Um, some of s some students who are under um, um, a scientific program, if you try to ask the universities, if you try to send your uh, grade transcripts enough in advance, they might accept you according to the credits that you have validated here in Tunisia. But I know lots of engineering students who just apply for masters of science or MBAs. Okay, so it really depends on the number of credits, the classes that you will end up taking, and do you need to be an engineer to be eligible for that program. That is the main difference. I can't give you like a, a strict, sharp, you know, framed answer. Uh, it really depends on what the university has to offer. Okay, uh, but for my understanding and according to um, my experience, most engineering to say, all engineering students from Tunisia usually apply to Masters of Science. Um, some, they are eligi eligible to some Masters of Arts if they would like to switch, if they have solid arguments for switching, uh, or business, pro business Masters, so either MBAs or Masters of Science and Supply Chain or anything related to business. So these are the most frequent, tr frequent transitions. Okay? 
Any further questions? Okay. Um, so after you submit those, you will also have to submit a personal statement. So the personal statement um, is something you will have to write as a candidate. And it's very different from what we know here in Tunisia. It's not a lettre de motivation. The equivalent of a lettre de motivation in the American system is a cover letter. And it's for professional purposes. But the personal statement is also different from people who are applying for undergraduate and for graduate. For undergraduate, uh, if you are applying through the common application system, you will have five questions. You will pick, a que you will pick uh, one question, one prompt, and you will have to write an essay about it. It can be about um, the transition between childhood and adulthood, um, a failure or someone who um, inspired you, an event who inspired you. So they would like to know you as a person. Okay, the personal statement or a statement of purpose for people who are, gra who are applying to graduate opportunities can be different because first of all, you need to tell them about the, your background, you need to tell them about your future plans, you need to give solid arguments about, um, about why you are picking this program and what this program has to offer to you as a candidate. And again, what you will have to offer as a Tunisian student on their campus. Okay, so do not take those documents for granted because you will have to work months and months on your personal statements. If a personal statement for a future undergraduate student will only be 600 words, some universities for graduate programs will ask you about three to five pages, six pages, um, 1,500 or 1,600 characters. So these require lots of work. Okay, and again, once you chose universities and you are uh, in the process of working on your personal statement, please send them my way because I can give you ideas and I can give you updates and um, I can help you improve the content of your personal statements. I do read essays, I do correct essays, and I do give um, solid opinion about that essay. And the more you do research about university, the more you know what the university has to offer and the more solid your personal statements is likely to be. Okay? Basically what you need to offer, um, well, what you need to submit to a university so it would accept you. Um, lots of people would think ranking is important. Yes, ranking can give you an idea about the best university, but if you have ranking about the best university of research and you are looking for a professional oriented program, I don't think the ranking would be um, accurate as a selection criteria. And I also, um, I mean, I specifically tell this to people who are applying for undergraduate programs because um, they want to go to Stanford and they want to go to Harvard and all of those Ivy schools and big names. They are very competitive schools and they offer amazing programs. I completely agree on that fact. But you can leave behind universities, colleges that offer quality education quality diplomas, but you just miss on them. And they do offer um, scholarships for international students, and they're really eager and they're highly interested in receiving a Tunisian student on their campus, but you just focus on those universities um, whose admissions rate are sometimes very close to zero point something. Um, so you need to work on the universities that are the best fit for you as a student, that have your major, that have your field of study, that are interested in international students. All of universities are interested in international students. So universities that will really make you happy and will really make you uh, enjoy your experience and will allow you to have quality education. Okay.